and my husband are going to just look at a car really fast. He saw a car that he wants me to look at. We're looking for cars for my son. Um, he's going to be a senior this year, and he is in need. He is in. I'm stuck. I can't talk. He is in need of one. So we're going out there and. One thing that we have been noticing is that how cars are just really, really expensive, especially SUVs, um, used ones. We're talking used cars. We're not talking about new cars. We're talking about used cars. Um, and even with them having a lot of miles and upwards of 100,000 miles or more, they still cost a pretty penny used. And, you know, I'm talking about a pretty penny for a teenager, you know, because ideally we, I don't know about anybody else, but, you know, we don't want to spend too much on a vehicle, uh, a vehicle for a teenager. At the same time, we want him to have something reliable and safe. So, um, he saw our car and we're going to check it out. After that, we're going out to eat and then after that we're going to the movies and then after that we're going dancing I'm lying <laughs> he probably looking at me like girl you doing too much that's what he that's what he told me when I was getting dressed <laughs> he said you doing too much and I'm like well that's what I do I do too much when I go out with you I you know you girl for rap that's what I do when I go out with you <laughs> Anyway, I'm a mess, but um, and we're sitting in traffic. Yeah, and I'm sure I've told you all before if I haven't I'm telling you now I hate traffic. I said I hate sitting in traffic. It's just Go stop stop go go stop stop go go, go stop. I just I don't, I don't like that. people who have to do it every day Especially those who have to commute a long distance, you know, I have to say my heart just kind of bleeds for those people goodness and then what if you have to make it you know make it home and you're not feeling well and you have to drive in traffic and it's like mm, mm -mm. so anyway I'm glad my husband is driving right now that way i can uh run my mouth and uh, help him drive, you know, because he he's just demonstrated to me that he needs my help. Ain't that right, babe? I do that. Huh? I do that. <laughs> just, I don't know. I just feel like you need my help because I am, I feel as though I'm the better driver. Um, I probably have driven the most, you know, between the both of us. Don't you think? I probably like I, as far as miles in your lifetime. Yeah, more than you. Come on now. Did you forget what I did for the state? Okay, when I was an auditor, all that driving. Okay, you know who's done more driving? My myself. Yes. <laughs> that don't yes. make you the better driver. Well, that that may okay. That makes me the more experienced. Which in turn, if I'm the most the most experienced, I'm the most knowledgeable, I'm the most, you know, I'm just more better at it. <laughs> more better. I think I said that in one of my videos. <laughs> like, <laughs> and when I went to edit, I was like, oh my god, no, I didn't say more better. Okay, anyway, but um, no, all jokes aside, I am. I have the most experience um, out of the two of us, probably, and it's not because I'm older than him, okay? And I know you're like, ooh, you're a cougar. No, I'm not a cougar. Well, I guess I could be a cougar because a cougar is essentially a, a, wom a, pers a woman that's older than her husband or her boyfriend or whatever, right? That's what a cougar is. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't really... They don't really say how much older. Well, I'm not that much older than him. I'm only three months older than him. 
<laughs> but <laughs> um, I'm still older than him. So does that make me a cougar? Just because I'm a couple of years older than him? But anyway, traffic is a booger bear. That's a booger bear. Just messes with your nerves. And then I really, my heart bleeds for the people in Houston that, like, if their AC isn't broke, is broken, and or they're riding with their windows down or whatever. I'm like, oh my god, because it's so hot, it's so sweltering hot. And I'm really happy it's raining right now because that's cooling it off a little bit. I think the hottest that I've seen so far, um, what is 103? Is that probably the hottest so far this summer? Or have you seen it get hotter than that? Uh, I've seen 105. Oh, okay. Uh, there's another um, lady that I watch here on YouTube. She was saying that in her city, I think it's gotten as hot as 111. Um, but she lives in Texas as well. Uh, so. I'm like, Dallas. I think Dallas is where she is. I think. If I'm not mistaken. But I know she's in Texas. And when she said 111, I'm like, oh my God. That's nine degrees less than 120. <laughs> that is hot. It's so hot. It's just hot. And then out here, you don't even like, as far as seasons, in Houston, you don't you don't even really get seasons. Like some places, what's a place that gets all of the seasons? What would be a place? Um, uh, uh, I don't know. California. You think California? Hmm, I don't know. Colorado. Colorado. Oh, no. Colorado is beautiful. Have y'all ever been to Colorado? Colorado is so beautiful. And the weather was really good out there. When we went, um, we, w we went in the summer and it wasn't, it wasn't like it is in Houston. It was, it was really nice, surprisingly. When I visit other places and the weather is like significantly different in the summer as it is opposed to Houston, I'm always like, oh my goodness. I'm like, oh, I can't believe it. It's just like something magical. I know that sounds crazy, but that's how I feel the way it is. It's just, ooh. But anyway, um, Colorado was really nice. And that summer we also went to, was it New Mexico? It was New Mexico, right? And we went in a cave. Have you all ever been? Um, in a cave, uh, that was a really, um, that was a very interesting, unique experience because, you know, we got on the elevator and we just started going down and down and down and down and down. And, you know, I, I don't know how many of you all know that I'm a horror flick fan. And have you all ever seen The Hills Have Eyes? I think it was the was it the second one or the first one? Anyway, one of them, they were in caves. You know, the the monster would, or the, the monsters, or, and I called the people, the, 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 the monsters. They were in the caves, and every time I look at that, I'm like, oh my God. That makes me think of at that time when we went to New Mexico and we visited the caves. I can't remember which cave it was. And also uh, the descent. Have y'all said that's another horror flick? And that's the horror flick where the ladies, the the girlfriends, they go in a cave, and uh, they're down in the cave, and there's monsters down there, like literally monsters that are they um, evolved down there, and they're like blind. But anyway, I'm telling the story. Um, but those are the two every time I watch those horror flicks I think about that and I know you're like every time that's because I will watch a horror flick or a movie if I like it I'll watch it maybe one or two extra times 20 extra times <laughs> <laughs> he said 20 extra times okay well maybe I will but I mean 
I mean, that's not uncommon. Do you all is, do you all have a movie that you like, okay, or a show that you like, and you watch it again? You might watch it again. He acts. He, my husband seems to think that's so odd, cause you have shows that you watch uh, more than once. Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> he said not on purpose. <laughs> the TV is on. Oh boy. <laughs> Child please. Child please. Nothing. There is nothing. Not one. There's there's not a show that you could watch again. There's out of all the shows, out of all the movies, there's nothing that you can stand to sit through again. Well, anyway, I'm a movie buff. I like watching movies. I particularly like horror flicks. But here lately, I don't watch as many of them, you know. And because of that, you know, it seems like I have been stumbling on some good horror flicks uh, uh, lately. But I'm a movie buff. I, I like watching movies. I probably watched too many movies. Well, too many horror flicks. But y'all tell me if you all watch, will watch a movie again, okay? Or watch it twice, or maybe three times, or maybe four. That's probably the <laughs> But anyway, whatever. Whatever. But anyway, back to the caves. The caves were, that was a very interesting, unique experience. And what in New Mexico, that's where we saw all the the mountains and all of that. And all of that is just so fascinating and cool to me because, you know, Houston's flat. There's nothing there's nothing exciting to look at out here. There's just psh, flat terrain. Nothing exciting. But uh, most of those mountains were made of rocks, right? Were most of those mountains? No. It was a rock and rock mountains or whatever. No idea. Um, another uh, cool place that, at least I thought it was cool, um, El Paso. And when I went to El Paso, I stayed in, I think it was the Double Tree. And uh, at night, I think I stayed up high. I forgot what floor, but it was higher than the third or fourth floor. And I could see all of Juarez. And uh, when we left, when I was with, this was when I was working, I had to go out there for a, uh, a audit. And it was a trip because one side was El Paso, one side of the street, and then you cross the street. And it was, it was Mexico. And it was, I'm like, Oh my God, it was it was just so, what do they call it, surreal? I don't even know if I'm using that word correctly. Anyway, it was cool, it was cool. That was another cool place, cool place or something cool to see. And the way that Mexico looked from the hotel, it was like, I guess it was um, a mountain or whatever, and you could see all of the, the city lights or whatever. It was just really neat, um, really uh, cool to see. But anyway, um, we are still in traffic and I will probably vlog once I get once we get there. So uh, I will see you all in the next clip. Hello chocolate wall, simple minds want it all, take it off, five o'clock. Mm. What come the rocks? What come the rocks? Dirty socks, kitchen sink, bring it on, drink a drink. Take it off, take it off, rhythm and blues Sipping on gin and juice
Hey guys, I am back home and I'm about to take off this makeup and take down my hair and then take a bath and then get in the bed. Dinner was really nice. Uh, we just ended up going to Grand Lux Cafe and I'm sure most of you all are familiar with that, especially if you live in the Houston area. Excuse me, but we went there. I just got the fish and chips and my hubby got like a chicken Alfredo. And for the um, appetizer, we got something called pot stickers. And for dessert, I got, um, some strawberry cheesecake and it was so good i love strawberry cheesecake well i love any kind of cheesecake i know the cheesecake factory they used to i don't know if they still have it but they used to have a um a cheesecake it was like a banana cheesecake and that stuff was so good i loved it it was so good but anyway um i had that but i didn't eat it there i brought it home and Chug a little bit down. And while we were out, my daughter called us and she wanted us to stop at Taco Cabana and get her some fajita nachos. So we did that and brought it back so she would have something to eat. And my son, we didn't have to worry about getting him anything because he's at his girlfriend's house. He'll probably be over there for a while. He's probably going to eat over there. Um, so, yeah, it was really nice. Um, I didn't get a chance to vlog at the dealership because it started to rain. <laughs> and that's no fun, vlogging in the rain. Or at least I've never tried it because I don't want to get my camera wet and ruined. So, yeah. Everything was nice. I'm going to rinse this off and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I got all of that stuff off my face. And just in case you're curious, uh, the melting balm that I used was the Clean It Zero. And it's got a lot of makeup on it. This is it. I went ahead and washed it with my Daily Metfoliant by Dermalogica. I've talked about this before and um a past video and i love it it's like a oat based powder and it doesn't dry the skin out and another thing that i'm just not realizing that i, I like about it is that usually when i have on heavy makeup i have to triple cleanse but i just use this and this and and that's it so so anyway that concludes the vlog for tonight um, I'm going to go ahead, take my bath, and I'm going to retire for the rest of the evening. And I will see you all later. Bye. Hey, everybody. We are back at it again. And we are currently on our way to Cond Road. And that should take us about an hour to get to, although we're already about maybe 20 minutes in. So not that much longer. Conroe has some really pretty parts to it, at least the parts that I've been to. Um, I think it's a really nice city. We're actually going to a function that uh, my husband's, well, anyway, my husband, right, he is a part of a, I don't wanna say a motorcycle group, well, I guess I should say group because it's not really a motorcycle club. But anyway, it's a, it's, what do you call it? It's just it's, people. No, it's, a, it's not a motorcycle group or a club. Just some people that I know, I have, I've written with, and they're, they're YouTubers. So it's just a group of, well, his friends. I just say his friends. Okay. Well, we say friends. Okay. Uh, All right. Then that's the friends. We say friends. You say that, yeah. But, but when you all ride, isn't it's more than just you and him, isn't it? Like. Yeah, it's, I mean, like it's more. A, yeah, it's more than me and him. It's, that's a total of how many you would say. It all depends on the day. Sometimes it can be. What's sick. the most? Most. The like, most. Yeah. The most. Maybe um. 
I don't know, maybe 15, 20 people. Okay, yeah. Most. And then when you all ride, you all go to, you all pretty much stick to surrounding cities, right? On your bike? Well, they, you know, they've been, you know, they've been out, they've been in like uh, Colorado, stuff like that. I've never On the bike? Riding the bike? All the way to Colorado? Yeah, they, wow. they been, but um, it's uh, it's a function for something because it's a, it's a motorcycle benefit. One of the guys that I, I rode, rode with, I rode with his son and his father, but his son got in an accident on the motorcycle, I guess, uh, and his lady backed out of the car out the driveway all of a sudden and he hit me. No, he no he hit he hit the car. They had to amputate part of his foot. Which is horrible. You know, they they say that uh, accidents in a residential uh, people are more prone to get in accidents in a residential area versus, you know, in a non-residential area. So that's where we're going now. And I don't know, depending on how it is there, because it's supposed to be at a brewery. Yeah, a brewery yes. Okay, and um, the 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 food is they're serving barbecue, and I have white on, and I shouldn't have worn white. And plus, my purse is white. Uh, anyway, I wore the wrong color. But anyway, you know what, y'all? Tell me this. What does Netflix and chill mean? <laughs> so y'all, do y'all know what that means? Okay. I, know, <laughs> I did not know that Netflix and chill meant watch the movie and then then after that you get your groove on. I didn't, I didn't even realize that until somebody brought it to my attention. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want to make this Yeah, I want to make this Because it's kid, like every you time, you know, like when a... I when I offer to Netflix and chill, <laughs> I'm like, hey, you want to... Oh my goodness, I feel like my eyes watering. Anyway, um, every time I'm like, hey, babe, you want to Netflix and chill? We can Netflix. And he's like, oh yeah, he's always willing. And then come to find out one time, I was like, I had offered to Netflix and chill. And he was like, well, are we really going to do the No, he said. I, I said, I, I, what I said was, I said, well, let's do, let's do the chill first and then we can nip it later. <laughs> you can't take an app first? I said, no, not an app. You, you thought Netflix and chill and watch movies and take a nap? No, 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 no. I just thought it was like Netflix and chill. Like, you you chill it. You chill it with you. You chill out. That's what I thought. My, oh, my God. My eyes watering. Okay, I don't have a nap yet, yeah, so I'm just gonna use this thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he was like, Can we do the chill part? And I'm like, Do the chill part? What are you talking about? He was like, The sex? And I'm like, Is that what chill part meant? Is that what you. And lo and behold, I looked it up, and that's what it means. It was so funny. He was like, Well, can we do the chill part? Because out of all these years, how many. How long have I been offering the Netflix and chill? Of course, that's not the only way he can get it, y'all. Or that's not the only. All the time we, you know, we come together or whatever. But <laughs> he was just like, "Yeah, let's Netflix and chill." I'm like, well, boy, he should say something. My, my thing of it is, if I wasn't doing the chill part, you know, the part of the Netflix and chill part, you should have been like, uh, you know, when we, because like, like, you know, the way it rolls is, you know, when we're watching the movie after, you know. I typically, when I go to the movies or I'm watching a movie with him or whatever, fall typically asleep. I'm gonna fall asleep. Yeah. Even if I go to the movie, unless it's a horror flick. If it's a horror flick, I'm gonna, well, if it's a good horror flick. If I feel like it's kind of slow, then I'm going to sleep. I've always gone to sleep. Because I, in my mind, you know, we're in the bed and we chilling. We never, I'm chilling with my boo. I didn't know. Anyway, so comment down below. Let me know if you knew that Netflix and chill meant, or the chill part meant SEX. Oh, I mean, who, who? Everybody. You know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. I'm so freaking hungry. I haven't eaten anything. Have you? Did you eat tonight? I haven't eaten nothing. No. Anyway, guys. I will, or we will see you there. We will definitely see you there. Oh my goodness. I hope it's not going to be outside because it might be raining. Yeah, I'm sure.
it's at a brewery, so it's a, I think it's a brewery slash restaurant, so I'm sure you... Oh, okay, okay, okay. See, see, you didn't, I, I didn't realize it was, sli- see, I've never been to a brewery, I don't know what that is, I, you know, I just don't know, I'm totally clueless. After all, I'm the person who didn't know that the chill part meant, you know, I, I still can't get over that. I need to ask my sister if they knew that. everybody knows Hey, if I'm floating out there and I didn't know it, then there's got to be some other people who didn't know it. I mean, and how do you? How did you know it? How did you know that the chill yeah, part is it? How did you know? Like, how did somebody say, "Hey, this is what"? It's on. It's on TV. It's on it. It is, but not, not. There's no mention of sex. It's, there's it's no a, mention of that. There's no mention, but it's, it's what, what they call it. Anyway, it's, get out of here. It's implied. Anyway. <laughs> it's in blood. Yeah, for people who that's what they got on the brain, I guess. Maybe. Please. I don't know. Cause to me when I, anyway, we will see you all there at the board. Good morning guys, I am on my way to get my monthly infusion. Um, a lot of you all know that I have RA and once a month I get um, an infusion. Is this open? So I'm on my way to that appointment and I'm not sure if I'll be able to sneak and film. I know if I ask for permission to film that they will tell me no. So gonna have to sneak and film <laughs> possibly and it might just be on my phone Check that out. it might just be on my phone so anyway the way the um, the way that it works I get an I I get the meds through IV through an IV and I get it normally get it right here but I noticed that I'm starting to scar a little bit so I uh, told her to start doing it in my hand, which wasn't bad, um, surprisingly. I thought it was gonna be kind of bad, but it wasn't. So I sit through that for between an hour and a half to two hours. It, de it depends on how fast they have my drip going. I typically like the drip to go really fast. Well, you can't have it going too fast, but when I first started, I would get it and the drip will be so slow. I'm like, can you all hurry? Can you, you know, make it go faster? Because this is just, it's just so slow. So, um, I'm hoping that I can get out of here really fast. Well, I know I'll be able to get out of here really fast. Like I said, between an hour and a half to two hours. So, I guess I will see you all in there. See, oh, you park over here. That's sun. Okay, I'll park in between these two cars. Can I get my myself in these in the spot? I think I can. I hate, I hate when people park on the line. 
Is that just me? Or is that everybody? I can't drive. Am I about to hit that car? No. If I hit it, I'm going to be in trouble. <coughs> I'm trying to look at the camera to make sure I don't hit anything or anybody. I was with my sister one time and I was getting into a parking spot and she was like, you know, we just depend too much on those cameras. Probably, but it's like some, some situations you just really can't see and it, it is helpful to be able to, to see what you're doing. Okay, so anyway, I am parked. I will see you all in there, hopefully. If not, I will see you when I leave. currently finished with my infusion and now I'm I'm going to Walgreens to pick up a script and then after that I'm going back home and I'm going to film again made it to Walgreens and there's nobody in the line yay I hate it when people are in the line because it, it always tends to take forever. Forever. Let me see if I can turn y'all so y'all oh, can't see. So anyway, I'm going to pick this up so I'll get my wallet out. Did they not see me? I guess I'm going to have to try to press the button Jamie, oh that's you I see you hi I'm good and you I don't even see you right there I was looking right there um I got a, a text saying to pick up a script um I think okay all right And can I add in my number for the points things? It's this lady. She's doing, uh, she works here at Walgreens. Her name is Bridget, too. <laughs> she spells her name like I spell my name. Every time I come up here, she always has her hair dyed, fried, laid to the side. Do you all know, know any people like that that always have their hair done? She always has her hair done. It always looks good. I tell you, everything is going up since like, well, definitely food. Food is going up. Have you all, and also there's supposed to be like a food shortage. Have you all been seeing um, email, not emails, like YouTube videos telling people to beware of a food shortage that's coming up? And they were talking about how one sign of it is the fact that <clears throat> um, everything is going up. The cost of everything is just going up and up. Even cheap stuff like rice and beans, that's even going up. Everything is going up sky high. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you too. Thanks. <sighs> okay. Got that done. 
and out the way. Let me see what these, these people gave me. Have you all ever had a pharmacist or a pharmacy make a mistake on your medications? If so, what did you do? How did you handle that? How did you handle that? Years ago, many moons ago, um, there was a pharmacy. Anyway, there was a... Um, pharmacy a pharmacist and that woman made a mistake on my children's medication and she was the sweetest lady she was always so nice anything that i needed help with you know anything like that she she was always helpful which way do i want to go and so i'm trying to think it was a i think it was an antibiotic she made a mistake on the dosage or something but whatever it was it wasn't something to where <gasps> excuse me excuse me it wasn't something to where like it could have harmed my child or something like that but you know that's pretty scary. Like, what if she, I wonder how frequent, like, after that, I wonder how frequently she, uh, okay, I think I'm gonna go. How frequently she messed up on other people's medication. Because what if you make an error to where it causes the person to die or have, go, to, go into cardiac arrest or anything like that? And then, furthermore, do you report something like that? to the board like when a pharmacist makes a mistake but i always like to every ever since that happened and you i know you're supposed to look at it anyway but i always make a conscious effort to you know of course when i go to the doctor make sure i have a good understanding of what they're prescribing me and then when i go to pick up the medication to make sure it's right All right, so I'm back at it again, folding clothes. And if by chance you see somebody walking by, just play along and ignore it. <laughs> it's either the husband or the kids. If you hear a dog barking, just ignore it. Just ignore it. That's my daughter's dog. Just ignore it. We're just going to stay right here in our own little section and mind our own business. So yeah, I'm folding clothes again, whites again. Um, but now that I've made it to the uh, folding clothes, I guess I'll just call this part uh, uh, a chat fold, chat and fold. That way in future vlogs, if you see that <laughs> listed somewhere in the timestamp area and you like that part, you could just kind of skip to this part. But what I wanted to talk about was um, relationships and are you all familiar with Rebecca Pope here on uh, the YT well anyway I really like her I just uh, stumbled across her channel probably about a week or so ago and I feel as though what I've seen so far I feel like we have some things in common um, such as age the way that she views uh, you know relationships and things like that um, I'll try to link her channel down below so you can see it if you want to check it out but she had a um, see I think uh, my husband's coming in so just ignore that she had a, a little video or whatever where she was talking about uh, I think the title of it was Are you coming in? No. But you in though? Huh? You in though? You fixing to leave? Yeah, I'm about to go to the uh, AutoZone right there. You're right there. Oh, okay. All right. But anyway, she had, uh, she did a video where, um, or a little story or something, something or another, and it was called, um, men are simple actually she talked about two particular things that um, i wanted to talk about but she was talking about men are simple and it's not too complicated 
you know, you know, stop making it complicated. And I, uh, I was like, okay, let me just click on this to see what she's gonna say because years ago, I'm gonna skip to this part. Years ago, uh, when my children, before I think it was before my children were born, probably 20. Let's see, my daughter's gonna be 20 soon. So probably 21 years ago, something like that. I was talking to an older lady and I think at the time she was my age. No, uh, no, I don't think she was 50. I think she may have been 55. She was an older lady. And she told me, girl, well, she didn't say girl, but she said, let me tell you something about men. She said, <laughs> she said, men are not complicated. Men just want you to do three things. They want you to feed them, be their friend. She said, it's the three F's and you all know what the other words. Feed them, be their friend and F them. So I was like, when she said that, I was like, I, was, I laughed at it because it was funny, but I was thinking men cannot be that simple. But I always had it in the back of my head of, of what she said. And, you know, over the years of being married, you know, um, my mom was like, if I ever had any type of issues or whatever, my mom was the person that I looked to for relationship advice because, you know, she's been married to my dad and, you know, she has a lot of experience. Uh, my mother is a Christian, yada, yada. I look up to her. And for the most part of it, I know that she would never. What is that noise? I'm back. I think I dropped a penny in the laundry because I'm washing clothes again. And anytime I accidentally, uh, like if some money or change gets in the washing machine, you hear it. And I don't know if you all heard it in the background. But anyway, going back to my mother, I just look up to her for relationship advice because I know she would never steer me wrong. So outside of my mother, you know, as far as relationships when I was younger, you know, I, you know, I just took that. That was the main thing uh, that probably I really took from anybody because I just didn't trust when I was younger. I never trusted uh, going to another person, another young person that was married. I always wanted to see someone uh, who had uh, success, you know, who had been married for some years and years and years and years and was still married and who, um, you know, had been through things, you know, our relationships go through things. If somebody is in a relationship and they say, oh, I have the perfect, perfect relationship, they lie. They are lying, especially if they've been married a long time. So anyway, I just always had that in the back of my head, you know, the back of my mind, you know, be their friend, feed them, and help them do the other thing so with all that being said i saw rebecca's video and you know talking about it was simple and lo and behold she said the same thing but she said it differently she said you would have to see all the things that she said but she said it differently and it really is true because you know i, I see you know in passing on the internet like scrolling through the internet you know people will have advice on you know what to do in a relationship how to act with a man how to do this and how to do that and i'm just thinking to myself you know it's really not rocket science i think the rocket science um comes in play when you actually are in um uh you're actually living with a person and trying to adapt to their ways. The complicated part to me is when you're in a relationship, how to deal with whatever he has, whatever issues that he has, whatever baggage that he has, whatever, um, however his people are. And when I say his people, his parents, his aunts, his uncles, all that other stuff, um, his viewpoint, uh, in life, you know, how he treats you. That's where, you know, what I've learned, the issues come into play. And, you know, when I say that, this leads me to something else that Rebecca um, said in another little video clip. She was talking about, you know, women, a lot of women, you know, they want to be married, they want to be married, they want to be married. But she was saying that she feels as though marriage is something that 
you know, some women just want to check off. And she also said that if people who hadn't been married actually knew the real dynamics of what are in a marriage, they probably wouldn't want to be married. Because let's be real, everything that we see on the internet, on social media, especially, you know, these so-called fairy tale relationships, that, you know, we, we all know that it's skewed, you know, and especially like if you're in, in my age group and you've been married or you've been married and divorced or whatever, you know a lot of that is skewed, meaning they're only gonna show you the good stuff. So I just thought that that was just interesting. She also said that she thinks this and a lot of her girlfriends think this and she said that if something were to happen to her husband, there's no way she would be married again. There's no way. And I have always said that. I've said that to every girlfriend that I have. I would never, ever get married again. I, I think the main, the main reason that I would never get married again is because I feel that I'm married to my soulmate, you know. Um, and he, I feel as though he treats me very well. I'm very happy with him. Secondly, I don't, I, I wouldn't want to go through the trouble, okay? I feel it's like, you know, the current situation that my husband and I are in now, you know, now that our kids are older and that we've both grown older, we know how, we, we know and understand each other better. I think that the dynamics of our relationship are so much better. I think that they're also, um, will be better as we, you know, get older and older. But the dynamics of our relationship, like now, was certainly not the way it is five years into the marriage. It certainly wasn't the way that it is 10 years in the marriage or 15, I would even say 15 years because we've been married 25 years. And it's like marriage takes so much work. There's so much compromise. There's so much understanding. There's so much forgiveness. Forgiveness. There's so much, you know, it's very, very, very difficult. And, you know, when I see people or young people or whomever that don't want to be married, that want to be married and that they want to be married, they want to be married, they want to be married. Want to be married. And don't get me wrong, marriage is good. I enjoy it. It's nice. It's hard work. <laughs> Let me repeat that again. It's hard work. Okay, I don't think I said it loud enough for the people in the back. It is hard work. And when people um, paint a picture that um, that it's something else, that it's all roses, all fairy tales, all sugar, um, creams, and spice, they're they're not they're they're not they're being. I feel as though they're being disingenuous. I also saw, I was looking at another live, <laughs> not a live, I was looking at a vlog and I saw a lady was with her girlfriends, two, no, one was married and two weren't. And one of the girls said, oh, I just want you to be married. I just want you to find love and all this other stuff. <laughs> and I was like, well, who's to say that her, she's not happy in her singleness. You know, who's to say that she wants to be married like you? Who's to say that what you have, her being married, is better than her singleness? You know, I that irritates me so bad when people try to, you know, inject uh, their situation upon another person um, as to say, uh, as to come across as my situation is better than yours. You know, you need to be this because... I need for you to be happy and I need for you to be this. And well, who's to say she's not? You know, I know a lot of women who are single, who are older women who are single. And to me, they live in their best life, like literally. They travel, they do what they want to do, they work, they this and that, that. And I think that, you know, I, I think that they have a good life. I just feel as though, I think the whole point of this topic or this conversation is to number one tell you about the late Rebecca Pope that I found and two is to if you're single out there okay take a chill pill enjoy your life if there is someone out there for you they will find you okay there's no 
There's no need to be on a hunt and all this other stuff. The minute that you're not worried about finding anybody or anything like that, they will appear, they will find you, trust me, okay? Have you ever heard the expression, there's somebody for everybody, okay? You know, it, it, for those who want to be in a relationship or somebody, you could be in the grocery store buying apples, okay? And you run into somebody and your future husband and they say, well, oh, you like those kind of apples? I like those kind of apples too. Of course, I'm making up a situation, but what I'm trying to tell you is stop looking, okay? And enjoy your life. If there is somebody for you, if it's meant for you to be with somebody, they will appear. They will find you. And if you do have people who are in your life who are trying to pressure you to be married or to be in a relationship or to do this, do this, just do your best to kind of let that go in one ear and out of the other. But yeah, I just had to talk about that. Let me know what you all think. Do you all agree with the whole idea of with men are simple all you have to do was like the uh, elderly lady that told me years ago be their friend feed them and help them that's all you gotta do just do those three things do them do them and you'll be fine do you all agree with that and also do you do you think that women that if single women who are single if they knew the uh, the actual dynamics of you know being married or how difficult it is or the things that you have to go through or whatever, do you think that they would still want to be married? I mean, I don't know. Let me know. Um, I would love to hear about it. I'm gonna go outside. My husband's outside tinkering with his motorcycle, so I'm gonna go outside and mess with him. <music> I'm not